Andrew, thank you for joining us here at Preaching Matters. I know you've been teaching Galatians on Sunday mornings, and I know you've got some thoughts on the new perspective, as it's called. Can you share with us those thoughts? Yeah, sure. So um, one of the central themes of Galatians is that somebody is justified through faith in Jesus rather than through works of the law. In fact, Paul says that three times uh, right at the heart of the letter in chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. Uh, We know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, so that we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. I love it when um, Paul wants to make something obvious, he says it three times. So the central idea is that the way in which someone can be counted right before God on his judgment day, justified, is not by works of the law, but by faith in uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Now, the new perspective, so-called, has introduced a debate about what those words, the works of the law, mean. And um, this is not a new debate. It's been around a long time, and people uh, much more competent than I have weighed in on it. So some of you may know about it already, but here are my own thoughts. Uh, Basically, the idea is that the works of the law, so this new perspective says, doesn't refer just to trying to achieve um, a place in heaven by good works in general, It's not about trying to be good, things that you might do, going to church, religious performance, etc. But it's rather more specifically um, being Jewish. So um, according to the New Perspective, what Paul is addressing in Galatians isn't kind of legalism, trying to get to heaven by being good, but nationalism or ethnocentrism, trying to get to heaven by being Jewish. And his problem is not with people who are trying works righteousness, as it's being called, but by people who are insisting on Jewish things like being circumcised and eating um, certain foods only, so no bacon. So, he, um, so they say that the phrase, works of the law, should be narrowed to only those J- Jewish distinctives rather than attempts at, at doing good in general. So what do they say and what are some of the implications? Well, there's lots of, I mean, the debate ranges everywhere and lots of discussions about background and all this kind of thing. But... Um, Let's just focus on the argument in Galatians itself. Um, and it looks at first sight as if they've got context on their side. So we've just been in chapter 2, 15 to 16. Um, but if you look just before that, you'll see that um, Peter and um, Paul have had a debate and a disagreement. Um, Peter, known as Cephas, in chapter 2, verse 11. When Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face. Um, before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. So um, you see two issues. Peter and Paul have uh, disagreed because Peter won't eat with Gentiles. Maybe that's to do with the whole food laws. What kind of food is acceptable? Can you eat bacon, etc.? Uh, and also the issue of circumcision. He, he's worried about the circumcision group who are insisting on circumcision. So the very immediate context of this is about Jewish distinctives, what you eat whether you have to get circumcised. And they say, well, look, there we are. That's the issue in Galatians. And actually, later on in Galatians, you see the same issue. So um, Paul talks about um, if you accept the need to be circumcised, chapter 5, verse 3, uh, then you have to keep the law, etc. So um, undeniably, Jewish things are involved in the debate. But according to the new perspective, that's all it's about. It's just about um, Jewish nationalism. And if they're right then Galatians doesn't really address the problem or the question of um, trying to um, be acceptable to God by what you do. It's just not about that. It's just about this ethnic debate. Um, And therefore, the way in which Galatians is often taught and applied, you know, don't try to work your way into heaven, look at how different Christianity is from the other religions, which all prescribe something that you must do, but Christianity tells you something that God has done by grace, Um, Galatians just isn't about that. You can't use Galatians to speak to that if the new perspective is right. And why do you think that's wrong? (laughs) Well, for lots of reasons. But again, let me just constrain myself to Galatians. Um, What what we really need to do is to look within the text to see what this phrase works of the law can mean and how it's used. And I think there's at least three reasons why it can't be narrowed in this way. Um, Certainly it does relate to questions like circumcision, but I don't think it can be narrowed to simply the Jewish distinctives like circumcision. Three reasons. Number one, um, in chapter three, um, towards the end of the chapter, Paul is going to use an argument about timing. He'll say God made promises to Abraham by faith uh, 430 years before 
he introduced the law. So his argument is, um, it can't be by the law that you're justified, because that would be to change an agreement that was made long beforehand, 430 years beforehand, which was just a trust in God agreement. Now, if it's circumcision that Paul has in his sights, that argument just doesn't work, because circumcision was given around the same time as the promise to Abraham, Genesis 17, just um, five chapters after it was first given. Um, it's a, it must be about something more general than just circumcision. Um, argument number two, um, twice in the book, um, Paul um, warns people that the law goes together as a whole package, and he speaks about all of the things written in the book of the law in chapter 3, verse 10, and then in chapter 5, verse 3, if you accept circumcision, you're bound to keep the whole law. So um, he doesn't seem to single circumcision out as being different. He says it's part of a whole package. If you want to do the kind of getting right with God by circumcision route, then that's going to involve the getting right with God by everything that you do, and you've got to do everything right route. So he, he lumps it all together. The third argument, which is um, one that Thomas Schreiner points out, is that in chapter 6, um, verse 13, we're told that the false teachers fail to keep the law, um, even though they are circumcised. So if you, if you narrowed what's meant by the works of the law just to circumcision, that doesn't make sense. Circumcision, tick, they've got that right. Keeping the law, cross, they've got that wrong. So um, it, it just doesn't make sense there to narrow it. So um, basically I'm arguing that the phrase works of the law cannot be narrowed to only circumcision Jewish distinctives. Um, it clearly relates to that, but it's not narrowed to that. Actually, um, their insistence on Jewish things was a symptom of a, of a bigger mentality, which is that we can be justified, we can be counted righteous by God on account of things that we do. Um, sometimes people say, which is it then? Is it, is it about um, Jewishness or is it about legalism? And I want to say, don't make me choose an either or, it's a both and. Um, I think both issues come together because they're related to each other. Um, here and in Romans 4, actually, I think it's the same both and there. What do you think is the place of this kind of discussion in a regular Sunday sermon? Yeah, well, firstly, I think the preacher has to do this kind of homework himself in his study. You just need to engage with these kind of debates and you need to look in the text to resolve them. I mean, the New Perspective debate goes into all kinds of you know, Jewish secondary literature, etc., but I think as evangelicals, we want to be looking in the text to resolve these questions of what the text means. Um, we need to do that ourselves. But I think there is also a place for it in the pulpit. So the new perspective, uh, not everyone's come across it, but many have. Um, it's taught by um, particularly um, the, the ex-bishop of Durham, Tom Wright. Um, his commentaries are very popular. Lots of people in our churches will be reading that stuff. They'll come across this. So I think there is a place occasionally to, to address these kind of scholarly debates from the pulpit um, by way of equipping um, and protecting our people who might be coming across them. Uh, we had a debate about this actually in our um, senior staff team about uh, what is the place for the kind of theological aside that not everyone will follow. You know, maybe in church one, one week you've got someone who's there for the first time um, they're struggling just to follow what you mean by justified They've never heard of this thing called the New Perspective. And yet here is someone in the congregation who has been around a while, is a theological reader, and is in danger of being swayed by some of these things. Um, and we decided that actually there is a place for the aside that stretches the mature Christian or, or warns the person who's reading widely. Um, and I think it is possible to do that in such a way as you, um, you maintain a main line of the sermon that everyone can follow. The way I did it when I taught it on Sunday was to say, Here's a sermon with two asides. Big point, we're justified by faith in Jesus, not by what we do. Illustrations, application, accessible to everyone. Now I've got an aside, just for a few minutes, for, that some of you will, will need to engage with. Um, okay, here we are, da -da -da -da. I went through those arguments. Now let's go back to the main line. Again, everyone can follow it, here's my main point. And if we don't do that, if we reduce to the lowest common denominator, then we never stretch the able Christian and we never protect the Christian who's exposed to other things. So um, I really would um, suggest that occasionally in our sermons, we do take moments out just for the sake of these difficult issues or these um, issues where false teaching is coming into the church. Andrew, thanks for joining us here at Preaching Matters. 